Have you guys seen the Marvels yet? You know, the latest MCU movie? I am a really big fan of the MCU. I love it. I am a collector of comic books. I have been collecting since I was 12 years old, I think is when I started. Yeah, like 6th grade. Seventh grade is when I started collecting comics, and I've just never quit. I am not afraid to admit that. I'm actually rather proud of it. I was a geek before it was cool. I don't care. So I've got a pretty long history with comic books and comic book movies. I think the MCU is one of my favorite overall franchises. I mean... I'm not the only one, right? This is like probably the MCU is probably the most successful film franchise of all time, I think, at this point. I mean, if you can call them all the same franchise, I, I still think it's sort of they, they sort of treat it as individual franchises that are all sort of connected. You can take the Marvel Cinematic Universe as a whole and that endeavor by itself is probably the most successful film endeavor like of all time made somewhere in the area of i think it's around 17 billion dollars like if you take all the films combined so far all the ones that are just from like marvel studios you know the ones produced by kevin feige or whatever this is not counting the sony ones or the uh fox ones even though those are like now officially canon within the mcu as well which is awesome but anyway yeah, the Marvels uh, kind of bombed. Didn't do too well in the uh, box office. But yeah, the Marvels kind of bombed. You know, it had a budget of $200 million And it had a $46 million opening weekend, which is pretty bad for a budget for a movie that has a budget of $200 million. It has since made around 76 million domestically. Its its domestic run is still going. It's still in theaters as we speak, but it's topped out. And uh, at this moment, it's just sort of limping along. It may make a couple, a few more million bucks before it's gone, but domestically, that's pretty bad. Uh, so far, it's made yeah 77 as as of today, around 77 million dollars domestically and another hundred or so international which adds up to around 187 worldwide and for a movie that costs 200 billion dollars that's that's a turkey that's a bomb unfortunately unfortunately that's a flop and it's kind of hard to understand that though isn't it it's like how can a movie that makes 170 like 187 million dollars how can that be considered a flop it's because the movie costs so much to produce so that's kind of the problem here you know if it didn't cost so much like if it only cost like 50 million bucks to produce it would have been a you know huge money maker and this is kind of in contrast to the the first captain marvel movie which pulled in about a billion dollars worldwide you know it was something like 500 million domestic and then like another 500 million worldwide there kind of saying so a lot of people are saying well how come that one made so much money and this one didn't and there are lots of reasons for that but i think the biggest reason that people aren't understanding is that the first movie in the series the captain marvel that was the lead into Endgame. That was basically the movie before Avengers Endgame came out. And that was the one that everybody wanted to see. And so Captain Marvel was like, people mainly went to that just so that they could get the after credits. <laughs> right? That's kind of what they went for. You know, they didn't really go there for fucking to see Brie Larson or whatever. Right? But admittedly, that was a good movie. And, you know, I saw the Marvels and I thought it was great. I thought it was fun. I thought it was better, I think, than the first Captain Marvel movie by far. It's much more of a comedy. And it seems like a lot of the MCU movies nowadays are leaning a lot more on the comedic elements. Ever since we saw, like, Guardians of the Galaxy kind of started adding a lot of comedy to the mix. Like, like early MCU movies were much more gritty. You know, you had things like Thor The Dark World or Captain America Winter Soldier. Like, that movie's gritty as hell, you know. Or even Civil War, the one where, like, Cap is fighting Iron Man and stuff. Pretty gritty, even though there were some funny moments to it. You know, there were there were always jokes in the MCU. 
it seems like since Thor Ragnarok came out, they've been leaning really heavy on the comedy. Like that one, and then Thor Love and Thunder was like, like pretty much Thor and Love and Thunder was like a comedy. Wasn't even much of an action movie, really. And then Ant-Man is like, you know, mainly leans in really heavy with the comedy. And so that's kind of what we're seeing with a lot of these um, a lot of the, the latest like phase of the MCU. Even Spider-Man has a lot of jokes, although the last Spider-Man, you know, the multiverse one, like it had jokes, but it wasn't up to the same level as, say, Thor Ragnarok or, or Thor Love and Thunder or something like that. Or even like Wakanda Forever had a lot of jokes too, but it wasn't as... It wasn't. It was much more serious. But it seems like this, this is the direction that they're going. They're, they're basically making these movies funny. And I can understand why. It's because the, the source material is ridiculous. So just have fun with it. And it seems like that seems to be a winning formula when it comes to Thor. And they try to do the same thing here. It's much better. My own personal review is that it's way better, I think, than the first Captain Marvel movie. The one that came out in like 2019 or whatever. Way, way better. 100, 100% better. It was actually pretty well written. There's a couple of things that I didn't necessarily agree with or I thought were a little crazy or maybe even some things that could be considered plot holes, but they're nothing that nothing that really detracts from the film. Nothing that's a showstopper, I don't think so. Some stuff I really loved, like they go to this planet where the way people communicate is by singing and dancing. That, that shit was hilarious. That was perfect. I'd love to see stuff like that, and I hope we see more of that kind of thing in the MCU. That was hilarious. So, yeah, thought it was good, but it didn't do too well. And uh, and here's the thing, right, is that the critics did really didn't like it, but the audience seems to actually be into it. So if you look at Rotten Tomatoes, let's take a look at what Rotten Tomatoes has to say about the Marvels. 61% tomato meter from the critics, but 83% audience score. That's not too bad. Now, this has led some people to think like, well, how come if the audience score is so high, how come people aren't seeing the movie? How come it's doing so badly in the theaters when it's getting an 83% score? It's indicative of good word of mouth. Well, doesn't seem like that's happening. It could be lots of different reasons, but it just seems like people are just not into it, right? For whatever reason, whatever. Maybe this is a score that's like review bombed. I mean, it could be. I highly doubt it. I highly, highly doubt it because here's the thing, right? Usually when a movie gets review bombed, it's usually the other way. It's usually people review bombing it and saying it sucks. For example, the first Captain Marvel movie got review bombed. All of the pissant little culture warrior mega chud morons going on there saying that this is the worst movie ever and blah 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 and it sucks and all this other shit. But then it made all this money, right? People went out and they saw it anyway and that was evidence of it getting review bombed. Like, if you don't like a movie, if you thought it sucked, if you thought it was stupid then you would not leave a positive review. There would be much more shitty reviews here. If the movie was bad and people weren't seeing it because they said it was bad and word of mouth got around that it was bad, then you would see scores here saying it was bad. So I highly doubt that. It's, it's no, no. Like, I mean, unless you think Disney paid somebody to review bomb fucking Rotten Tomatoes. Like, why would they do that? Like, Disney has... They have other shit to spend their money on. They're not going to waste money hiring a guy to get a bunch of bots to, like... <laughs> to review bomb a movie. Like, no, they're not going to waste their money with shit like that. That's... Doesn't... No, no. I mean, it's kind of... I, I, I don't believe that. That sounds like a conspiracy theory to me. That sounds like bullshit. Now, am I saying it's impossible? Am I saying that that never happens or that... that maybe couldn't have happened here yeah i mean maybe i guess there's a possibility that somebody in the disney corporation said oh maybe this will get some positive buzz or whatever who knows i just i find it highly unlikely 
and just not believable that Disney's marketing would waste time. In fact, you know what the reason why the movie didn't do too well is because there really wasn't a lot of marketing for it. Because it came out kind of on the tail end of the strike where all of the actors were basically forbidden from going out and promoting the movie. See, here's the thing about Marvel movies, right? Is that they often spend not just all this money on special effects and all that, but they spend a lot of that money goes towards promoting the film, getting the actors out and, and putting them on talk shows and stuff like that. They go on Jimmy Fallon or whatever. They go on The Tonight Show, Stephen Colbert, whatever the fuck. And why are they there? They're there to promote their new movie, right? That didn't really happen this time because we just got out of the middle of like a six-month-long fucking writer's strike. The actors were striking too, and they basically didn't promote anything, and this movie came out like two weeks after the strike ended or something like that, so there was like zero promotion for it. That can definitely make a difference too. Movies and video games are the, are the, the two things. There's two things that have actually proved that the more money you spend on marketing, the more money the product makes, right? You can get a really shitty piece of shit movie, but if you spend $50 million on an advertising blitz, you'll get people to go see it. Case in point, Batman v Superman. Piece of shit movie, it came out, everybody said it was a piece of shit. This is the worst thing ever. It made a shitload of money because they blew a ton of fucking cash in marketing. And, I mean, of course, that one had a leg up already because it had, like, DC's biggest heroes in it or whatever. But still, there's only so far that you know, it'll go. If you look at the, the drop-off for that movie, it was pretty fucking bad. But it had a giant opening weekend. Why? Because they did an advertising blitz on it. They, did it. they blitzed it like crazy, and they got the return for their money. That movie was profitable. It wasn't a bomb, at least. I mean... It was a sack of garbage, I agree there, but it didn't lose money like Captain Marvel did. But for whatever reason, you know, whatever the reason why that this movie didn't do well, be it because maybe people really didn't like it, maybe because there was some sexism involved, which I think there's a lot of that. But I think the, the real reason why, besides the fact that people just weren't into it, and there wasn't a lot of marketing for it. I think the real reason why people didn't go is just apathy. You know, it's just there's so many superhero movies that come out. And this one didn't have any big names in it. I mean, Captain Marvel was only in one other movie. She shows up in the Avengers for five seconds. She didn't have a really big part in either of those Avengers movies. She just sort of shows up at the end. She was in her movie and then that was it. So there's not a big fan base of Captain Marvel people to begin with. Kamala Khan, that character, had her own TV show, but that show didn't do too well either. A lot of people didn't like that show either. So if they didn't like the show, they're not going to go see her in the movie. So it's sort of like, you know, a movie that has characters that people don't really care about. And I think most people said, yeah, I could probably skip this one. And that's kind of the consensus I'm seeing in the fandom is that, the fans, most of the Marvel fans kind of said, eh, I'll see it when it comes out on Disney+. Plus." That was what I kind of got. Of course, the Culture Warrior MAGA assholes are doing a victory dance over the fact that the Marvels bombed because they finally get to say that, oh, go woke, go broke. See, here's the thing, right? The go woke, go broke thing... They're always, this is something that you always hear, and it's almost never true. You ever notice that? Every kind of, everything that they say, you know, you go woke, go broke, and it turns out that it's like almost never true. You know, they, they try to say that about the Black Panther movie. Black Panther makes a billion fucking dollars. They try to say it about Wakanda Forever, the sequel to Black Panther. That one makes fucking not as much, but it's it still made something like $700 million worldwide. Right? They try to do it like basically every time a movie comes out that has like black people in it or like women or like gay people or something like that, they all try to do the same shit. You know, go woke, go broke, right? They said it about Barbie. Barbie makes fucking a billion dollars. So when it actually does turn out that a movie that is quote unquote woke, that is a movie that has people who aren't white males as the lead, especially a superhero movie, 
when one of those kind of fails, these guys have to like sort of celebrate because it happens so little. It's so like so rarely the uh, the case that these people are actually correct that when they are correct, they have to kind of like go crazy and dance around like little children and like blow their load all over the place because they know the next time it's just not going to like happen. <laughs> they know that the next time they try to claim this shit that it's very likely that they'll be sitting there with their dicks in their hands again. Here's a guy that I want to take a minute and see what he's has to say about this. This is Nerdrotic, Nerdrotic, who is a pretty big time YouTuber. He's got almost 100,000 subs. Actually, no, he's got more than that. He's got almost a million subs, excuse me. Let's turn on our laptop here. And let's make this a little smaller so that I don't get any kind of channel gigs. So here's his video called The Marvel's Failure is a Massive Culture War Win. It is 13 minutes long. We're not going to watch all 13 minutes because this guy literally spends the first 10 minutes just reading headlines about how the Marvel's bombed. And if you think I'm lying about that, if you think I'm lying about the fact that all he does is read fucking headlines, I will show to you. Let's listen to a few minutes of this deep insight that this this uh, culture warrior has about the failure of the Captain uh, of the second Captain Marvel movie. Stretch because I don't want you pulling a hammy on your well-earned victory laps. Now, it looks like the only people surprised by this massive, epic, catastrophic failure is the Access Media, and I'm enjoying the hell out of it. Disney Marvel, and as the Access Media calls Nia DaCosta, black female director Nia DaCosta, set out to make a fun, funny film that's full of heart, and I want you to remember that. Why do you have to say that, by the way? Why do you have to say black female director? Like, what's the point of mentioning... The woman's, the woman's race or the fact that she's a woman. What does that have to do with her movie or how much money it made? doesn't have anything to do with it at all. He just said that so that it's it's like a dog whistle. Every time you notice that, the, the other guy that the last time we looked at one of these chuds in their videos, the guy that was talking about the woke Spider-Man, he would do the same thing. He would always mention the race and the, and the sex of the character or whatever. It's a dog whistle to his audience here giving you a signal that you're supposed to hate this person. For later, what we ended up getting was a boring, miserable film that lacked any soul. And the quote from the Access Media has been nothing short of glorious, ranging from the Marvel Cinematic Universe's audience has aged out overnight to lack of promotion due to the Film Actors Guild strike, which, in my opinion, has helped the film. Instead of having a $46 million opening weekend, if Brie Larson was out there, it probably would have had a $30 million opening weekend. Is that like a personal attack or something? Yup! We've heard excuses like superhero fatigue and, quite frankly, Okay, that's three headlines so far. I think it's just MCU fatigue, and then there's the old Access Media favorite, it's the fans' fault for being racist, misogynist, or, sexist bigots. And then there's the other favorite from the Access Media, it's YouTubers for precisely the same reasons. From the Washington Examiner, five. the Marvels bombs at weekend box <laughs> office after anti-woke backlash. From Garbage Tier Inside the Magic, the Marvels director tackles anti-woke MCU fans. And from Forbes, which is now behind a paywall, the Marvel faces anti-woke backlash after box office Seven. flop. From CBR, the Marvels director Eight. reacts to MCU films' woke criticism. From The Direct, the Marvels Nine. director responds to woke. You thought I was making that up, right? You thought that I was making up that this is all this guy like for the first like like 10 minutes of this video. Like look at the little preview I'm doing at the bottom. Right? You can just see another one. Headline, headline, headline. You know, another headline, another headline, another headline, another headline. Like that's it. That's all this guy is saying. Like his his insight, his commentary on this is just like hey here's another headline that says this one bombed hey here's another headline that says it bombed here's another one this entire video is all it is is really just virtue signaling virtue signaling and trolling so that the guy at home the uh sort of racist misogynist nazi fucking gamergate dude at home or whatever can like sit there and masturbate to the fact that the libs got pwned because the multi-billion dollar entertainment conglomerate bombed. Like, that's why these guys are happy. There's just something to keep in mind. You even, you even heard him say that at the beginning of this, where he goes, this is your well-earned victory lap. 
So a corporation went out and spent $200 million and then got on a movie and got a bad return on their investment. And that, this is why these guys are happy. This is the huge win in the culture war, right? Okay. So we're going to fast forward all of this headline shit. You can see eight minutes in. 827 there's another headline how the marvel's got its blurred energy like so many fucking like we're just gonna skip all this shit even right here there's this is where he talks about the comments and everything and how he thinks it's all conspiracy and i'm not gonna bother with that shit because it's stupid we're gonna come over here where he finally makes a point at around 10 minutes in this guy finally starts making a point about why it's such a culture war victory for this thing to bomb right now before we get into this, like, what exactly do you mean when you say culture war? Because we see a lot of that nowadays, right? We're living in the middle of the culture war. Between conservatives and liberals, right? Between the right wing and the left wing. And you see that a lot. And what is what is it all about? What exactly is a culture war about, right? Well, it's because there are certain people in the country who want to change the culture of this country and make it more inclusive because the t culture of the United States traditionally has not been very inclusive of people who are not white cisgendered Christians, specifically that white cisgendered Christians. If you're one of those people, then America seems to treat you very well. And if you're not one of those people, then you have certain disadvantages traditionally in this country. That's just kind of how it's sort of been for a very long time, right? And people kind of want to change that. You know, gay people and trans people want to live and be themselves and not have to worry about getting the shit beat out of them or being fired from their jobs or anything like that just because of the fact that they're gay anymore. Uh, black people don't want to have to worry about getting blown away by cops or not making as much money at the same job that a white person makes or whatever. Or like they want to have the same employment opportunities, the same educational opportunities as white people, that kind of thing, right? Latinos who are quickly becoming a majority in this country and will be one day within a hundred years. They will be, they will be the majority in this country. They want to start getting some respect too. And they're not being respected as much, right? They want to not have to worry about discrimination. And this is all stuff that's happening in the country that, you know, this is the culture war. This is people want their rights, you know, this includes things like bodily autonomy and all that. And the Christians and the conservatives don't want to change any of this stuff. They don't want to give up any of the power that they have because the way they see it, the way conservatives see the culture war, they see that if everybody else gets treated equally as them, they don't see it as everyone being brought up to the level that they're at. They see themselves being brought down to the level that they put non-white people at and not cisgen and non-cisgendered people at and non-straight people at. That's how they see it, right? This is kind of the conservative mind. The conservative mind basically says that there are winners and losers. That's how they see it. And they see it if I'm not a winner, then I'm a loser. That's basically it. That's the conservative mindset right there. If I'm not in charge, if I'm not running the place, if I'm not setting the rules, somebody else is, and then they'll be doing it for themselves and not me. So I should be the one in charge. You get racism and shit like that too in there, you know, all this stuff factors in, you know, especially when you get white evangelical Christians, there's all kinds of different motivations. It could be uh, racist motivations. It could be religious motivations, but more more often than not, it's just a cultural thing. It's a, a cultural motivations that kind of blend all of these things together as to why they do the things they do and why they vote the way they vote. And for a lot of people, it's not as blatant as what I'm saying. Most people don't think of politics and how I just explained it. They don't, they don't see it as, oh, well, if I treat black people equally, that means that 
I'm, I'm not in charge anymore. They don't see it like that. When they're justifying to themselves voting to take away somebody's rights, they don't see it as I'm, I'm making sure that I get to dominate this person, right? They may see it as, oh, well, I'm just holding this person accountable for their own actions, or I'm making it more equal by taking away their access to welfare, something like that, that kind of thing. That's kind of how people justify stuff like that. So just remember the motives of any given group of any given demographic is never nefarious. You know, their motives to themselves in their heads, they're thinking, I'm doing the right thing. And this guy right here, this nerdrotic dude is probably thinking that as well. When he makes this video taunting Disney for having a flopping a movie that flopped. He's thinking in his head, probably it's justified. Uh, we're sticking it to the feminists. We're sticking it to the liberals and the feminists and the and the SJWs and all that because these people need to be put in their place or whatever. He's not necessarily seeing it. I mean, I don't know. I don't know personally. Is this dude a white supremacist? I don't know. I mean, he definitely is given the dog whistles though. Mentioning the gender and the race of everybody who isn't white, for example, that's a per that's a dog whistle, right there. Just like the black female director. Well, why? Did, what the fuck does that have to do with her movie? Why did you say black female director? Why not just show a picture of her on the screen? That's good enough, right? Why? What's the context of someone's race when they make a movie that... I mean, if the thing is, if it was a movie about race, that'd be one thing. But it's not a movie about race. It's a movie about superheroes that fly around and beat up aliens. And it's a rather good movie, if you ask me. So, setting all that up, that's what you think, right? When people think about culture war. So, why is it such a big win for a movie to flop why is it a win in the culture war for disney to lose money in a movie is it only because it has a female cast is it only because it has a black female director is it only because no white men are in this movie like at all there there aren't any white men in the movie by the way like there's like none <laughs> at all is that why it's what is it simply because they had the audacity to make a movie that didn't star a white male lead is that why this is like a culture war thing where does the culture war part come in is what i want to know right this is where he finally starts to talk about that about 10 minutes in 10 minutes of his 13 and a half minute video is when the guy finally starts to talk about why it's such a fucking win so let's listen to what the man has to say i don't want to put words in his mouth now that I've poisoned the well like crazy, let's listen to what he's got to say. Well, it's just a sample. It goes on and on. Now, that is what I call review bombing, but I'm sure it's a total coincidence. This never was really a matter of rooting for the Marvels to fail because we didn't need to. We knew it would, and it was just a matter of sitting back and waiting for it to happen because this isn't our first rodeo, and there's a lot of reasons this happened, including one pointed out by my good friend Chris Gore. Turning Marvel and Star Wars into girl brands will prove to be one of the costliest decisions in entertainment history, without a doubt. Unfortunately, in both Disney Marvel and Disney Star Turning Star Wars and Marvel into girl brands. That's what he just said, right? Okay. Let's rewind it just a little bit. I want to make him, I want to let him finish his point here. Entertainment history, without a doubt. Unfortunately, in both Disney Marvel and Disney Star Wars case, they turned boy brands that girls liked into girl brands that nobody likes. While all the focus is deservedly on the Marvels, it's always been bigger than just another bad MCU film. This How is that? That doesn't make any sense. Okay. First off, Captain Marvel, the franchise Captain Marvel, was never a boy brand per se. Okay. The first movie in the series is Captain Marvel. Now, that's the thing to remember, like the wider MCU cinematic universe. I mean, I guess you could, you know, they're all connected, but they're not all part of the same franchise. The Captain America movies is the Captain America franchise. The Avengers are the Avengers franchise. The Thor is the Thor franchise. And they're just franchises that that crisscross with each other. But they're not all part of the same. I mean, they're part of the same, like, series. But, no, the performance of, like, the Iron Man movies doesn't have anything to do with the performance of the Spider-Man movies, for example. Right? And this is how it's been borne out. It's just because they're all crossover so much. 
that I guess you could could say that they're kind of related, but they're not all part of they're not all the same franchise. Like this movie, The Marvels, was not a sequel to Ant Man Quantumania. No, it's not a sequel. That doesn't have anything to do with this movie. Except for the fact that they just happen to share the same setting. So how is it turning it into a, a girl brand per se, right? See, the first problem this guy has is the fact that he's trying to say that there are such things as girl brands and boy brands. Not really. Not when it comes to super expensive Hollywood movies. Like, yeah, maybe when it comes to toys, there's girl brands. I mean, there's Barbie. Boys don't play with Barbie very often, do they? But I guarantee you, not, you know, the... The audience for the Barbie movie included men and boys as well. You can't make a movie that makes a billion dollars and not have only one gender. Go see it. <laughs> no. The audience for the Barbie movie included men. Yes, it did. Okay, it was a fucking date movie for fuck's sake. That's, what the bar that's why Barbie did so fucking well. Because it was a date movie. Same thing here. They're not making a movie... I mean, a movie about exploding spaceships and aliens and shit is not just a female movie. It's not just a girl movie. It has a a female lead, but that's kind of like saying Tomb Raider was a female, you know, a girl brand, right? No, not really. You know, Tomb Raider. Remember Tomb Raider? Laura Croft and shit? Do you think only girls play it because it stars a, a girl? Like, no. Plenty of men, plenty of boys play that game. Plenty of men and boys went to see those movies when they came out. Remember, they made to Tomb Raider movies. Underworld, there's another one. Starring Kate Blanchett, she's a sexy vampire chick, goes and kills werewolves. Do you think only, like, girls went to see Underworld? Like, no. <laughs> right? I mean... No, the men go to see these movies too because they got sexy fighter chicks in them, right? And tight spandex and stuff. Same thing here. Okay, it's fucking Captain Marvel. I mean, yeah, okay, she doesn't get naked in the movie or whatever because it's for kids. Because that's, that's the other thing you got to remember. These movies are for children. That's why it was such a big fucking deal that there was a sex scene in, in Eternals. It's like, ooh, there's a sex scene. We didn't even, there was like no titties or anything either. It was just... Two characters had sex. It was such a big fucking deal. It's the first Marvel movie to actually have sex in it. Yeah, why? Why, after like 30 movies, have they like finally had one that actually had a, a sex scene in it? Because these are movies for children. Ultimately. They're movies for children. I mean, shit. Like, the, one of the main characters in this movie is like a teenage girl. <laughs> for fuck's sake. So, do you think they're going to go see it, right? But does that mean, like, no teenage boys go to go see it? Like, no, it's a comic book movie. That's dumb. Like, teenage boys are, like, the fucking prime demographic for comic book movies. So, I guess my point is what I, is that it's, it's dumb to say what this guy just said, that just because they made one movie in the MCU that has a female cast as the main characters... That they're turning the entire MCU into a girl brand is like, doesn't make any sense. It's just dumb and it's not true. And even the movies that have, you know, even the movies that have female leads, even the, even the TV shows that have female leads, WandaVision, She-Hulk, Miss Marvel, even those shows, they're for everyone. Just this one just happens to have a female star in it I mean seriously like why is this a culture war thing why is it such and that's the other thing I want to understand like why is it such a big fucking deal that every movie has to have a male lead every movie has to have a, a white male cis star in it why is that such a big fight like how I don't understand how somebody can see that and think that this is like part of like a war for the culture of the United States. Like, w haven't we always had movies that have had like female leads in them? Hasn't that always been a thing? 
I mean, as far as I can remember, there's always been action movies, specifically action movies, specifically superhero movies that have had female stars in them. Wonder Woman, Catwoman, <laughs> right? I mean, shit, there's like all kinds of fucking, I mean, damn, for years going back. When did the first Catwoman movie come out? Halle Berry? Like, in the fucking 90s, I think. You ever, you ever see that piece of shit? That, that real piece of shit movie with Halle Berry? It was fucking terrible. <laughs> it was so bad. We should review it one of these days. Anyway, I'm rambling for a bit, so let's continue. Let's see what else the man has to say. Pop culture cancer started almost a decade ago in gaming and comics. Then there was Ghostbusters 2016 and metastasized into Star Wars, Star Trek, and Doctor Who. And the corporations and the corporate media hid behind these divided fandoms and pit one against the other while... Pit one against the other, okay. Vilifying a large portion of it. Vilifying the very people you rely on. The fan, the paying customer. Poisoning and dividing fandoms that had gotten along in some cases for decades prior to that. Then it- All right, all right. First off, that's all, that's bullshit, okay. Fandoms have never fucking gotten along. I don't know where he's pulling that shit out of his ass. The whole point of being a fan is to get into flame wars with people about how everything that you liked used to be good and now it sucks. That's all the, that's the entire point of being a fan of any of these things, especially things like Star Trek, Ghostbusters, Doctor Who, and Star Wars. Those those are the four nerdiest fandoms of all time that he just mentioned. Star Wars, Doctor Who, Star Trek, and Ghostbusters. Extremely nerdy, right? These are the most divisive fans who have ever lived. You can even put, you know, you really want to get like into the weeds, put Masters of the Universe in there too. Those He-Man fans are incredibly divided. But anyway, so how the fuck though does it pit the fans against each other? This is why this, this whole culture war shit is just really stupid. Okay. First off, it's just a movie. So let's take the... The, the 2016 Ghostbusters movie, right? It's just a movie. If you don't like the movie, then don't go see the movie. That is what any rational, responsible adult would do. Wouldn't you say? You know, if something doesn't look good to you, if it looks like you may not enjoy it, there's no law that says you have to go see it. Even if you're a fan of Ghostbusters, and you really like Ghostbusters and you were waiting all these years for it to come out, and you know, you're like the first two movies that they made in the 80s, you love them, you watch them all the time. And then they make another one and it's got an all female cast. You're like, ah, whatever. And then you see the preview and you just think it looks stupid for whatever reason. You think the jokes don't look funny, you think the effects look dumb, whatever. Or maybe you're just not a fan of Tina Fey, I don't know, whatever, right? And you just go, you know what? I'm not going to bother seeing that movie. Was it was Tina Fey even in that? I don't even, I can't even remember, right? It's been, what, eight years since I came out? And you just go, I'm not going to go see it, whatever. Maybe I'll watch it one of these days. Perfectly acceptable response, you know? Perfectly acceptable to say that. Because if you don't like how a movie looks, don't go see it. Who are the people that made such a big fucking deal? over all these movies it was these guys these guys who take fandoms as it's like part like they treat fandom like it's a religion and this is why like they they are equating it to a culture war this is this is why i spent a good 10 minutes kind of setting the frame and and explaining what the culture war actually is because i don't think that this shit is actually part of the culture war. The fact that like misogynist and racist trolls get butt hurt when a movie comes out that doesn't have white people in it as the stars, I don't think that has much to do with the culture war at all. I think that is just like idiot fanboys crying when other people get to play with their toys. I mean, this is what it ultimately all is. It's it's sort of like they're pissed off because the, corp- the corporation that owns Ghostbusters said, hey, we can make money if we put out another Ghostbusters flick. Oh, well, we can't do the exact same fucking thing that we did last time. People won't go see it. Oh, well, we have to do something else. 
Okay. Well, hey, these actresses are actually very popular out here. You know, this Saturday Night Live actress, whatever her name is, and these other two, right? They're very popular. Why don't we make a movie with them? Okay. Hey, the test audience likes it. Great. Let's put it out. Oh, some of these core fans who watched our movie 40 years ago are pissed off because it doesn't have Peter Vakeman in it. Like, do you see the disconnect here, folks? Do you see what's going on here? You know, you don't own a franchise if you're a fan of it. You're the fan of the franchise. You don't own it. You don't get to decide what happens with it. And every little thing that comes out doesn't have to cater to you. You see what you see how this guy put it, though? He said, oh, and they're using it to divide the fans and pit them against each other. Why? Why is that even a thing? Why would you even think that? Why would you even think it? Okay. How is it? How are you being pit against anybody else? Because they like a movie and you don't. Because it has women in it. Because it has black people in it. I mean, is the reason why you're not going to the movie because you're a racist piece of shit and you don't like black people or you're misogynist and you don't like women? Is that the reason why you're going? then that's not them putting, they're not pitting the fans against each other. I mean, if you actually are dumb enough to actually say that, post that on a forum somewhere, that's people getting pissed off at you for being a racist, bigoted asshole. That's got nothing to do with the fans being pit against each other. No, it's it's stupid. It's just the, the framing is stupid. The way he's framing this is fucking dumb. And, you know, it's a it's a cancer that started with Ghostbusters and then went through Star Wars and blah, blah, blah. All of those things that he just said, none of those movies were bad. I mean, Last Jedi, I think, is one of the best movies like I've seen. It's like the best new Star Wars movie. I mean, Rise of Skywalker was a piece of shit, but Rise of Skywalker wasn't a piece of shit because it had girls in it. It was dumb because they rushed it. <laughs> <laughs> they rushed it. They brought Palpatine back, which is fucking dumb. They should have kept his ass dead. You know, but stuff like that. Like, no, Last Jedi was actually really good. Force Awakens is really good. You know? I mean, shit, Ashoka. Have you guys seen that show? The show rules. Ashoka's fucking awesome. <laughs> right? I mean, all the other new Star Wars is really good, too. Mandalorian is, like, one of the really good. Fucking Book of Boba Fett was kind of shitty, but it was all right. It's watchable. You know, Obi-Wan, I think, is the best. I, I really like obi Wan show. Really, dude, that show fucking was awesome. Or, no, actually, you know what? Andor. Andor is the best new Star Wars movie. Uh, show. Andor, hands down. If you haven't seen Andor yet, go out and see it. But how is this pitting, and pitting the fucking fan base against itself? You know, they made another Ghostbusters movie with kids. These guys didn't flip their fucking lid over that one. Why? Because there were no women in it, is that why? Because it had white kids, is that why? So it's okay if you take the Ghostbusters movie and you make it with children, then it's okay. But if you put the if you put female adults in it, it's not okay. Like, what are the rules that make something woke? Exactly. Like, can I have a movie that has black people in it? Does that make it automatically woke? What if I put Dave Chappelle in the movie? Right, he's a black guy. Does that mean that it's woke again? Or is it is it okay? But or is it like up to the politics of the actual black person that I put in the in the movie? It doesn't make any sense. It's like it's like they basically just make it up. Whatever's woke is what they don't like. That's really the de- you know. If you ask, ever ask anybody what woke actually means, they can never tell you because they just they're just making it up as they go along. There is two minutes left of this. Let's listen to a little more led to a full-blown fan revolt with the rings of power when the Tolkien fandom soundly defeated a trillion dollar company in Amazon. And here we are a year later and just in the last couple of months we've seen Ahsoka fail on the... Okay. The Tolkien fandom soundly defeated a trillion dollar company on Amazon. I like the way he put that. The fandom defeated a trillion dollar company. Like, by not watching the show. So... He's framing it like it's a war. I mean, I don't see how that defeats Amazon. Amazon is defeated. (laughs) Their army is retreated. Like, what? No. You know why people didn't watch the show? Because it was a piece of shit. 
it's boring. I tried watching it. It was boring. I couldn't get past the second episode. Fucking nothing happens in it. Right? You're watching it. There's like hobbits with fucking grapes and shit in their hair. And like Gandalf, like naked. And a dude goes and talks to a dwarf. You know, there's they made a big deal over that show because it had like black dwarves in it. Like, you know what they do with the black dwarves? She like makes dinner. That's it. Okay. <laughs> like, I guarantee you, if there were no black dwarves in the show, it still would have failed. You know why? Because it was boring. It was boring. Nothing happens. You have to have shit happening in your show. So people to go see it. Interest dropped off. You know, I would have watched it if there were dragons and shit in it. That's what I want to see. I want to see trolls and dragons and goblins. And like Gandalf running around and, you know, Thou's, you should not pass and all that shit. That's what I want to see. And I could give a shit if there's like dwarves that are black i mean how come dwarves can't be black like what there's no dwarves that live in like you know whatever tropical region in middle earth and they wouldn't develop you know melanin there's no like equivalent to like real life continents (laughs) in middle earth or whatever i mean it stands to reason that there would be the same race like the same kind of racial breakdown in middle earth that we would have in our earth they did show in the movies that there were like like Arab kind of Middle Eastern people. So does that mean wouldn't there be sort of like African people? The equivalent of African people and the equivalent of Asian people and the equivalent of Native Americans or whatever in Middle Earth? Well, how come the other races of Middle Earth, the dwarves and the elves and the hobbits and shit, wouldn't have this same racial diversity? It makes perfect fucking sense, wouldn't it? doesn't it don't they have elves in africa don't they have dwarves in africa right wouldn't they have the same skin color as the people that as the human beings that live in africa (laughs) why is it such a big fucking deal to have a black dwarf you know the same shit you know star trek when voyager came out and they had tuvok he was a black vulcan this these people said the exact same shit then too it wasn't that big of a deal because it was the 90s and, the and you know, the internet was still in its infancy and people didn't fucking lose their minds. But no, you could go online and you can find people bitching and moaning about that too. Oh, they're going to ruin Star Trek. Oh, Star Trek is going to become racialized. That was the word. I, I specifically remember reading that. Star Trek has become racialized and is pandering to black people. Shit like that. Blah, 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 blah. And Tuvok goes on to become one of, like, the best, like, actors in the entire Star Trek canon. Tuvok's awesome. If you watch it, if you've ever seen Voyager, it's actually a really good show. A lot of people don't like it, you know, because it is kind of the weakest of the, the shows in the 90s. Well, not really. Enterprise is the weakest, but still. Voyager's actually really good, and the guy that plays Tuvok is a brilliant fucking actor. And he's up there just as good as, like, a classic Vulcan as Spock is completely believable within that universe's context why can't you have the same thing in middle earth (laughs) i'll tell you why because cis white gendered uh christians are afraid that if minorities get representation then somehow that diminishes their own and that's just simply not the truth it doesn't diminish your representation in a franchise when other races are represented. No, you know why? Because how many shows out there have white people as the lead? How many MCU movies have a white man as the lead guy that you can think of? How many? Like 29 of them? I think there's been exactly three movies with female leads. Captain Marvel, Black Widow, and The Marvels. And, oh wait, four. Now, Wakanda Forever. Exactly four out of 33 movies. I mean, how is this... How 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 exactly is this a, a war? If it's a culture war, then the woke side is, like, not even close to winning. If they... If only four of the movies out of 33... I mean, it's fucking dumb. I don't know. Disney Star Wars side, South Park came out and embarrassed Disney. Disney continued.
By the way, that was bullshit. Ashoka is fucking awesome. Don't listen to this asshole. He doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. He just said Ashoka failed. No, it didn't. Ashoka is fucking prop one of the best Star Wars shows. Like I, I rank it maybe number three under like Andor and then and then Obi Wan and then Ashoka. That's the that's the order. My own personal favorite order. So this guy doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Continue to embarrass itself, the mighty Marvel Cinematic Universe has fallen, and the Marvels is one of the biggest comic book film flops of all time. How? Okay, that's true. It did flop pretty bad. How has the MCU fallen? Like, this is the the second MCU movie to actually flop. Out of 33, this is the second one, right? And it's not even the, the MCU movie that's made the least amount of money. Like, that's actually... The Inhumans, <laughs> right? The Inhumans is the one that has made the least amount of money. In fact, you know what I've got here? I've got here list of Marvel movies ranked by money, right? How much they've actually made. So let's take a look because this doesn't count the Inhumans on it because we've all forgotten about the Inhumans. The Inhumans was actually uh, the pilot episode. They released it as a movie. So that counts as a movie. But they're not saying that's a movie here, and then they've kind of they've kind of said that oh, the Inhumans is, forget about that, they're gone. The Marvels, of course, so far has made a little bit more than this. It says 161 million, right? It has made as of today 187 million worldwide. But yeah, it is last in line after the Inhumans. Let's see what other MCU movies didn't make that much. Let's see. Incredible Hulk 2008. That one only made 264 million worldwide. Captain America the First Avenger 370 million. Hmm. Black Widow 379 million. So you kind of see it's like, huh. Not all of them are made and this is worldwide, right? Domestic here. Domestic 183. Captain America domestic 176. Right? The Hulk domestic, 134. Right? Looking at this one, domestic here is now 77. It's not 65. Kind of seems like it's on track by the time the Marvels leaves the box office. It's on track to have right about the same amount of money as maybe the Hulk. Maybe a little bit less still. It'll probably still make less. I mean... Remember, the only reason why you can call this a flop is because it costs $200 million to make. If it would have cost $50 million to make, it'd be a raging success. If it was any other um, comic book movie, it'd be a raging success. Let's take a look. This I, I went to Box Office Mojo and I searched by comic book adaptation. Right. And then I sorted it by lifetime gross so we can look at some of the comic book adaptation movies that have been out here and kind of see some recent ones and see how well they did so of course we've got a lot of other little things here you know for example this is uh return of the swamp thing from the 80s or whatever that doesn't count that was a long time ago here's the inhumans one million five hundred thousand $1,521,787. That's pathetic. That's a flop right there, folks. A million dollars. This was released domestically. As a movie, it only made a million and a half dollars. That's pretty fucking bad. Steel, 1997. Less than $2 million. That's a flop. You ever see that movie, Steel? Uh, let's go on a little bit more here. Let's see. Punisher Warzone, $8 million. That was 2008. That's a flop. Guaranteed that movie costs more than $8 million to actually make. Jonah Hex, 2010, only made $10 million. Not too well. Bloodshot, $12 million. You ever read Bloodshot? This was a movie with, uh, what the fuck was that guy? That guy Triple X, you know, from the Triple X movies. Um, and he's also in like, um, fucking God, what the fuck is that dude's name? Vin Diesel was in Bloodshot. This was a big deal. This movie, when this, when this movie came out two years ago, 
it probably flocked because of COVID, right? And, you know, 2020, it's right in the middle of COVID. But still, not very good. Dread. The Dread movie that came out in 2012. That movie rules. If you haven't seen it, $13 million. Not really good. All right. Of course, Howard the Duck, $16 million. And this is in 1984 or $1986, but still. Uh, the New Mutants, $23 million. Electra, $24. Kick Ass 2, $28. Hmm. History of Violence, $31. Have you seen that movie? History of Violence? That movie's fucking awesome. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, $31 million. Wow. Kind of seems like comic book movies don't do very well unless they're very big names. Catwoman. 40 million. Ghost in the Shell, 40 million. That's too bad. Ghost in the Shell, this is the one with uh, what's her name from Black Widow. Right. That's actually a really good movie, in my opinion. Hmm. First Kick Ass, 48 million. Okay. The Crow, 50 million. Really? Not too well. Ghost Rider, 50 million. Guaranteed that one was a flop. Blade Trinity, 52. Yeah, that was probably a flop. Uh, let's see. Spawn 54. That was definitely a flop. 1997 Spawn. Yeah, that cost more than $54 million to make, for sure. Fantastic Four. That was a flop. $56 million. Hellboy. Hellboy. 2004. This is the OG, the good Hellboy. 59 million. That one got a sequel. Dark Phoenix, 65. Blade, 70 million. Yeah. These were all, I mean, kind of seems like unless your comic book movie has a huge name in it, like Superman or Batman or Iron Man or Thor or Captain America or something, you know, or the Avengers or whatever, kind of seems like your superhero movie isn't going to make a shitload of money and the MCU has kind of bucked that trend for a while right it seems that it seems that the MCU has kind of kind of coasted on that trend built up a lot of a, a loyal fan base and now that it's going to kind of great you know second tier characters maybe that's starting to wear off a little bit Right, because I can kind of guarantee you, if this was the male version of Captain Marvel, it probably would have bombed as well. Okay, I can guarantee you. It, it seems to me that the fact that this movie was headed by a you know the it, the star was a female, the star is a woman, and there weren't any white males in it. I highly, highly doubt that has anything to do with the reason why this movie actually bombed. I think it has to do with the fact that Captain Marvel doesn't have the same star power. I mean, there's other reasons too, like we said, but that's probably the main reason, in my opinion, most likely. And if it would have been a Thor movie, if it would have been a Guardians of the Galaxy movie or something like that, I think that the, uh, the, the magic of the MCU is wearing off. And like I said, most people said, hey, you know, I saw the, the, the Miss Marvel TV show. It was mediocre. And I think I'm going to skip this one. Don't think it has anything to do with any silly ass culture war. So, I don't know. I mean, is the MCU starting to finally peter out? I don't think so. I know there's been a lot of fan backlash for the last couple of movies. Everybody seems to hate Ant-Man and stuff like that. And it's like, I don't think so. I think they're actually really good. Even now, even the last sort of five movies that have come out, I don't think there's any stinkers in it. And even this one. If you haven't gone and seen it yet, that's fine. It's definitely worth seeing in a theater, though. But it's going to be out on, on Disney Plus in like a month anyway. And I could totally understand, you know, people who just want to wait for it and they'll catch it then. It's actually somewhat decent. So don't listen to these assholes who are sitting at home creaming their jeans over the fact that, oh, finally one of them finally bombed. 
don't listen to these fucking morons sitting there like masturbating and shit to the fact that like oh we got to pwn the libs so hard <laughs> right no, it's stupid as hell you know a movie is not your culture right and representation in a movie is especially when it's a movie put out by like by like a billion dollar mega conglomerate like that's not the culture war voting rights that's your culture war right there representation in media i mean i guess but not really i think i think if anything it's just like a side a side thing for people to bitch and moan about. I mean, what's really more important when it comes to our culture war, folks, right? Your ability to vote, your representation in government, your ability to, you know, have equal rights, or the fact that somebody made a superhero movie that stars somebody of your race. Like, what's the difference? Like, what what's more important when it comes to our culture war? So, I don't know. Anyway... Fuck these people. That's all I gotta say. Hello folks, if you like what I do and you want to support the channel, please consider buying something from my SD shop, supporting me on Patreon, liking and subscribing, and checking me out across my social media links listed below. Thank you all so much, and see you next time.